I want to begin right now with a live look from Austin, where proceedings are underway in day seven now of Ken Paxton's impeachment trial. And we are waiting to hear from Laura Olson, who house managers are expected to call to the stand at any moment. She is said to have had an affair with the attorney general. Jack Fink just stepped out of the Senate chambers. Uh, he's joining us now. Jack, uh, why is her testimony so significant to all of this? Well, Ken, two of the impeachment articles against suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton involve constitutional bribery, and one of them is about his alleged fare, specifically how Paxton benefited from one of his campaign donors, Nate Paul. The impeachment article says it was Paul who hired the Attorney General's alleged mistress, Laura Olson, to make it easier for him to see her because she had been living in San Antonio before moving to Austin. Earlier in the day, Paxton's former executive aide, Andrew Wicker, testified that he saw Olson and Paxton together in the summer of 2020 coming out of an elevator at the Omni Hotel where Paxton had been staying while his Austin house was being repaired following storm damages to the master bedroom. Wicker said he had been inside the Paxton's Austin home when he had overheard a conversation between the attorney general and the lead contractor doing the repair work. Wicker said Paxton told the contractor he wanted to move forward with replacing the kitchen countertops and renovating the cabinets, which would cost $20,000. He was stating that he would need to check with Nate on the cost of countertops and renovations to the cabinetry in the kitchen. I walked away with the impression that Nate Paul was involved in the renovations of General Paxton's home. Given the fact that we were working on several items related to Mr. Paul, it felt as though there might be an inappropriate relationship there. He stated that he appreciated me bringing his concern to him and that he then assured me that that was in fact not the case. Did uh, his explanation absolve all concerns? No. That was Wicker talking about him directly asking Paxton about it. The House also accused Paxton of bribery as it relates to the home renovation, saying he benefited from Paul paying for them. But during cross-examination, one of Paxton's attorneys showed Wicker a photo of the Paxton's kitchen taken just several weeks ago, showing countertops and cabinets were not changed from 2020. We can see that there were no work done on the countertops, can't we? Yes, we can. We can see that there was no work done in the cabinetry, can't we? Yes, sir. Now, Paxton's former top deputies have all testified previously during this trial that Paxton abused the power of his office to help Paul in a variety of ways. Ken? Yeah, Jack, today we also heard the House wants to change one of the Senate's rules. Uh, what's that all about? Well, it involves Paxton's penalty if he is convicted on any of the articles of impeachment. Now, right now, if that happens, he would be removed from his office, and then senators would have to decide whether to take a separate vote and make him and disqualify him from ever holding state office again. Now, what the House wants to do is actually make it automatic that if Paxton is convicted, he would automatically be disqualified from ever holding state office again, and senators are going to be making that decision tomorrow. Ken? All right. Jack Fink, uh, live for us in Austin. Thank you so much for the explanation and the highlights so far of day seven of this trial. Folks, a reminder that we are streaming the full trial live for you. It's available right now on the CBS News Texas YouTube channel. You can also catch up with all of the key moments on our website.